Now, they're among the most damning images yet to emerge from inside Syria. Video shot secretly inside the military hospital in Homs by an employee of the hospital reveals for the first time how injured civilian victims of the violence are being tortured in their beds by medical staff. The video has been made available to this program, and this extended report by our foreign affairs correspondent, Jonathan Miller, does contain extremely distressing images right from the very start. This is the military hospital in Homs. The images you're about to see were filmed secretly by a worker there who says it's become a torture chamber. He accuses doctors of doing the unthinkable. For months there have been rumors, now for the first time video evidence. In a ward, wounded men lie blindfolded and shackled and according to our whistleblower, they're flogged and electrocuted in their hospital beds. On a table, a rubber whip and electrical cable, the tools of the trade. This filmed within the past three months. It's recent. On government orders, all of those shot or injured in protests in Homs must be brought here to the military hospital. The rusty chains are very tight. This smuggled video, which we are unable to independently verify, accords with persistent and mounting accounts of torture in hospitals. Injured people should never expect this sort of treatment. So much for medical ethics. This man's chest and hand bear the marks of severe beating. Such injuries typical of those now widely seen on the thousands of Syrians who claim to have been tortured. For months, Civilians in Homs have been targeted by President Bashar al-Assad's snipers and tanks and artillery. But the covert abuse of patients in Homs Military Hospital presents an even darker twist to the regime's criminal conspiracy. The hospital worker who risked his life to film on the wards tried to stop what he called these shameful things, but was branded a traitor. He was interviewed in a safe location. I've seen detainees being tortured by electrocution, whipping, beating with buttons, and by breaking their legs. They twist the feet until the leg breaks. They operate without anesthetics. I saw them slamming detainees' heads against walls. They shackle the patients to the beds. They deny them water. Others have their penises tied to stop them from urinating. Our hospital source has provided us with the names of civilian and military doctors and surgeons and other medical staff whom he accuses of assaulting patients. Many, he said, are kept alive simply so that they can be interrogated, others revived between torture sessions. He says he witnessed abuse in the ambulance section, the prison wards, the x-ray department, and even perversely in the intensive care unit. Sometimes they have to amputate limbs and they go gangrenous because they don't prescribe antibiotics. Some of the detainees used to be taken from the hospital to the prison. They bring them back either dead or with a brain hemorrhage. We showed the video material to one of Britain's top forensic pathologists. Could the injuries on this man's chest have been inflicted by the whip and electrical cable lying in the ward, I asked. Yes, I think uh, there's strong corroboration there that these are the instruments that have produced the injuries to the chest. What you have across the chest is a series of linear bruises. They're all parallel, suggesting the man wasn't moving at the time. They're quite thin, the same as the instrument, and they've curled around the chest and around the right arm so that they're flexible. So the instrument is a flexible instrument. So you're looking, at, looking for a long, thin, flexible instrument, exactly as is shown. To inflict suffering like this on someone who's already injured uh, is, is really cruel ill-treatment. Those who claim to be victims of similar abuse in other state-run hospitals have told Channel 4 News that wounded demonstrators have even been killed in hospitals. The United Nations and international human rights groups have reported that doctors treating injured protesters have also been arrested, tortured and killed. The military hospital is run by the Ministry of Defence. Our whistleblower claims soldiers and doctors work hand in glove with the feared Mukhabarat secret police. Because injured civilians know it isn't safe to go to state-run hospitals, most turn to hopelessly under-equipped, unhygienic, makeshift backstreet clinics.
The hospital worker said that while some of the victims were soldiers who'd refused to follow orders, most were civilians. Some, he said, had nothing to do with anti-regime demonstrations. Others had been injured when their neighborhoods were attacked. The youngest I saw was 14 or 15 years old. Many detainees' names were removed from emergency admissions lists so that no one would know where they were. There were no names, just numbers. One of the doctors poured alcohol on the pubic area of a 15-year-old boy, then set him on fire. The surgeon said there were some decent doctors, as he put it, who refused to participate in the abuse of patients, but he said they were under constant close surveillance. The Syrian government has said it does not wish to comment on the allegations contained in this report. But when similar allegations first began to surface last year, I put them to the director of Syria's biggest military hospital in Damascus. If a terrorist come and injured, we give him every treatment you would he treat, needs. You would treat oh, yes. insurgents, you would treat unarmed civilians without question. And armed civilians. civilians. And civilians. And, and this is because of the Hippocratic Oath. So what is your, what is your reaction to the allegations that military doctors are refusing to treat injured protesters and are even doing worse, sometimes even involved in acts of torture? This is untrue. The general went on to deny that Syrian army tanks would ever fire into residential neighborhoods. Anti-Assad activists claim 700 people were killed in the month-long bombardment of Baba Amr district in Homs. Unknown hundreds more will have been injured. Unknown because the International Red Cross is still being denied access to Baba Amr, which Syrian forces entered last week. The grim evidence of torture in Homs military hospital begs a question as to where wounded civilians should now be taken for treatment once the Red Cross finally goes in to get them. Jonathan Miller on the secret video from inside Homs Military Hospital in Syria. And as you heard there, the Syrian authorities declined to comment on the allegations.